I can't imagine there are many things out there more representative of mid-1980s Japan electronics than a triple-deck stereo radio and cassette. This comes from National Panasonic. Why three decks? Well, it's obvious. It's because it's one more than two. Deck one can only play, but it also has a track-skip function that the other two decks don't, whereas decks two and three are both capable of recording. So you could theoretically simultaneously run off two copies of your new cassette album for your friends. Of course, heaven forbid anyone would ever think of doing something so nefarious. After all, home taping is killing music. Discounting the three decks, this is an otherwise unremarkable machine. For example, there's no Dolby noise reduction, there's no auto-reverse, and given its diminutive stature, calling it a boombox could be considered to be over-egging its block-rocking capabilities. Around the back, there's little going on other than the battery compartment, and that takes six C-cells, helpfully labelled as 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 5. Perhaps that's the suggested order in which you insert them, but they also fit in fine, just putting them in a more traditional order. As this machine dates from the mid-1980s, it will come as no surprise that the rubber drive belts have perished. Although the pinch rollers are still being driven, the spindles themselves aren't turning in any of the three decks. So, of course, that means that fast forward, rewind and play, as far as the take up of the loose tapes concerned, are all non-functional. Of some concern is the fact that when I unpacked the machine, I could hear a few components rattling around inside it, and a bit of a shake with the cassette doors open revealed these. Now, this one also reveals the fate of one of those rubber belts. It's clearly degenerated into an oily paste. Hopefully, the purpose of these loose components will become apparent once I open up the machine. Now, away from the cassette decks, the rest of this functions fine. The radio is marked up for the Japanese FM frequency range of the time, but it's also able to tune into the audio from the long-gone Japanese analogue TV broadcast that once resided in the upper part of our FM range. So this means that as well as the indicated 76 to 90 megahertz, I can also carry on moving the dial to the right and pick up all the usual FM broadcasts in the upper 90 to 108 megahertz range just fine. So it works fine as a radio, it's got a total control as well and despite those relatively small speakers it does have a surprisingly decent quality of sound. On the side there are stereo RCA and mic inputs as well as a headphone output and a 9 volt DC power jack and there's also a built-in mic on the top of the machine as well. But that's all well and good I'd just like to get those tape decks working so let's have a look inside. Now while I was opening it up another plastic component fell out and this isn't looking good at this point. Let's stay positive though. It does come apart well. All the screws are the same size as well which is good but in the process it's shed a few more bits and I've got a container of these little components now which hopefully I'll be able to put back where they belong. It's good to see that the wires are plugged in in this rather than being soldered. It makes it a lot easier to take it apart but I also found another loose spring that had become attached to the speaker magnet. Now the belts are on the other side of the tape deck so the whole unit has to come out but it's all designed to come apart quite easily. So just four screws and a number of unplugged connectors later and I've separated the three drives from the rest of the case. All three of the decks do still have a rubber belt attached to the motor and those look fine but I've also found out where my loose component should fit. This is a clutch mechanism that starts off with a felt washer at the bottom that's then supposed to be covered by the black plastic wheel and then it's all finally capped off with the white plastic piece. But I can see why these have come apart because the white caps for decks two and three have both split. Now the clutch mechanism looks intact on deck one though under this circuit board so I'll have a look at it just to double check exactly how it should all fit together. And you can see on this one that there's a spring. Now that's supposed to go between the cap and the wheel. So it's all meant to fit together like this. Now it makes more sense now as to why it's all come apart because once that plastic cap had cracked the tension from the spring popped it off the top. Now I'd managed to find the other spring as well inside the machine, so if I was able to glue or replace those caps, I'd be able to reassemble both of those mechanisms. You can see from the other side that the clutch is attached to a tooth wheel that moves depending upon the position of the transport controls, driving either spindle as required. The clutch is there to allow this to slip a little bit rather than putting too much tension on the tape, which might make it snap or stretch. If you have a look at this motor, you can see a date of July 1985. Now, whilst that's getting on for 34 years ago, the perished belts in here are nowhere to be seen. Now, they can't just vanish into thin air. The rest of them has got to be somewhere inside this machine. And I need to find out where they are so that I can replace them. 
but unfortunately I found them in the most inaccessible part. You might just be able to make out the rest of the gluey mess of the old belts wrapped up behind this wheel, and this goes the same for all three decks. Back when it was working properly, a belt would have run from behind each of the three flywheels down to the clutch wheels, but now those belts are just a tarry mess that's sandwiched between the wheel and the case. Now, the only way I'm going to be able to clean these properly is to take the wheels off, because that black paste is all the way down in there, spread around, trying to put anything down to clean it, whether it's a cloth or isopropyl alcohol or whatever, it just smears it all around even more. I really need to get those wheels out. Unfortunately, though, they're not intended to come out. The other side is attached to the capstan, and I'm really no cassette deck repair expert. So this problem currently has me beaten. Perhaps there's an easy solution I'm missing, but if you've personally taken apart one of these cassette mechanisms and there's something simple that I should be doing that I'm not doing, then please let me know. Shoving something down the side of them is not going to work. They need to come off. There's just too much gunk down there. But at the moment, this machine has three less working cassette decks than most portable stereos. Although looking on the bright side, it's still fun to look at. I can use it as a radio or as a novelty speaker. I could even use one of these Bluetooth cassette adapters in it, or should I call it a cassette adapter? I mean, whilst it does work, it is kind of missing the point. I was really hoping to play my unique three third bass and three times dope cassettes in this machine. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Did you know that a million hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every nanosecond? Oh, is that true? No, it's a gross exaggeration. But there's still so much choice that nobody can find our videos. So, what should we do? There's not much we can do. It's all down to algorithms. Can't we ring him up? Who? Al. Al? al go -rhythm. No, we need to find a way to manipulate the system. Well, I keep seeing all these articles about how people get all these hate speech videos recommended to them. Now there's an idea. We can get into the hate speech business. Well, I quite like the idea of being a shock jock. What's a shock jock? I think it's something to do with electric underpants. All right. Well, you do all the speaking. And then I'll be your sidekick, who agrees with everything that you say. Brilliant. And then we can ride this hate wagon all the way to the bottom of the internet. YouTube's trending page. Well, if you're ready, there's no time like the present. I was born ready. Right. The first thing I hate is when you're at the supermarket and the person at the checkout says, enter your pin number. But the machine isn't ready to accept it yet. Boom! Here comes the dynamite! And I hate it when someone's put a new toilet roll on the wrong way round, 
so the paper comes off the back. The truth train's coming through. Get out of the way or get on board. Um, I ate it when you're filling your car with petrol and it goes one pence over the amount you've got in your pocket. It's relatable because it happens. I ate it when YouTube videos start off with, hey, what's up guys? But then they don't allow me enough time to list my ailments. Yeah, it's like they're not really interested in finding out. What about when you buy a milkshake, but the straw's too thin to drink it? That's enough for the moment. I was just getting warmed up. Save it for next time. You don't want us getting banned from the internet. Well, I hope that's enough to get us some attention. Yeah, you know what time it is. It's just gone a quarter to three. <laughs>